Section four of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section four why should an artist be troubled by the shrill clamour of criticism mr oscar wilde again mr oscar wilde continues to carry on the defence of his novelette the picture of dorian gray writing to us under yesterday's date footnote june the twenty sixth he says in your issue of to-day you state that my brief letter published in your columns is the best reply i can make to your article upon dorian gray this is not so i do not propose to discuss fully the matter here but i feel bound to say that your article contains the most unjustifiable attack that has been made upon any man of letters for many years the writer of it who is quite incapable of concealing his personal malice and so in some measure destroys the effect he wishes to produce seems not to have the slightest idea of the temper in which a work of art should be approached to say that such a book as mine should be chucked into the fire is silly that is what one does with newspapers of the value of pseudo-ethical criticism in dealing with artistic work i have spoken already but as your writer has ventured into the perilous grounds of literary criticism i ask you to allow me in fairness not merely to myself but to all men to whom literature is a fine art to say a few words about his critical method he begins by assailing me with much ridiculous virulence because the chief personages in my story are puppies they are puppies does he think that literature went to the docks when thackeray wrote about puppydom i think that puppies are extremely interesting from an artistic as well as from a psychological point of view they seem to me to be certainly far more interesting than prigs and i am of opinion that lord henry wotton is an excellent corrective of the tedious ideal shadowed forth in the semi-theological novels of our age he then makes vague and fearful insinuations about my grammar and my erudition now as regards grammar i hold that in prose at any rate correctness should always be subordinate to artistic effect and musical cadence and any peculiarities of syntax that may occur in dorian gray are deliberately intended and are introduced to show the value of the artistic theory in question your writer gives no instance of such peculiarity this i regret because i do not think that any such instances occur as regards erudition it is always difficult even for the most modest of us to remember that other people do not know quite as much as one does oneself i myself frankly admit i cannot imagine how a casual reference to suetonius and petronius arbiter can be construed into evidence of a desire to impress an unoffending and ill-educated public by an assumption of superior knowledge 
i should fancy that the most ordinary of scholars is perfectly well acquainted with the lives of the caesars and with the satyricon the lives of the caesars at any rate forms part of the curriculum at oxford for those who take the honour school of literae humaniores and as for the satyricon it is popular even among pass men though i suppose they are obliged to read it in translations the writer of the article then suggests that i in common with that great and noble artist count tolstoy take pleasure in a subject because it is dangerous about such a suggestion there is this to be said romantic art deals with the exception and with the individual good people belonging as they do to the normal and so commonplace type are artistically uninteresting bad people are from the point of view of art fascinating studies they represent colour variety and strangeness good people exasperate one's reason bad people stir one's imagination your critic if i must give him so honourable a title states that the people in my story have no counterpart in life that they are to use his vigorous if somewhat vulgar phrase mere catchpenny revelations of the non-existent quite so if they existed they would not be worth writing about the function of the artist is to invent not to chronicle there are no such people if there were i would not write about them life by its realism is always spoiling the subject matter of art the superior pleasure in literature is to realize the non-existent and finally let me say this you have reproduced in a journalistic form the comedy of much ado about nothing and have of course spoilt it in your reproduction the poor public hearing from an authority so high as your own that this is a wicked book that should be coerced and suppressed by a tory government will no doubt rush to it and read it but alas they will find that it is a story with a moral and the moral is this all excess as well as all renunciation brings its own punishment the painter basil hallward worshipping physical beauty far too much as most painters do dies by the hand of one in whose soul he has created a monstrous and absurd vanity dorian gray having led a life of mere sensation and pleasure tries to kill conscience and at that moment kills himself lord henry wotton seeks to be merely the spectator of life he finds that those who reject the battle are more deeply wounded than those who take part in it yes there is a terrible moral in dorian gray a moral which the prurient will not be able to find in it but it will be revealed to all whose minds are healthy is this an artistic error i fear it is it is the only error in the book the editor added to this letter mr oscar wilde may perhaps be excused for being angry at the remarks which we allowed ourselves to make concerning the moral tale of the three puppies and the magic picture but he should not misrepresent us he says we suggested that his novel was a wicked book which should be coerced and suppressed by a tory government 
we did nothing of the kind the authors of books of much less questionable character have been proceeded against by the treasury or the vigilance society but we expressly said that we hoped mr wilde's masterpiece would be left alone then mr wilde like any young lady who has published her first novel at the request of numerous friends falls back on the theory of the critic's personal malice this is unworthy of so experienced a literary gentleman we can assure mr wilde that the writer of that article had and has no personal malice or personal feeling towards him we can surely censure a work which we believe to be silly and know to be offensive without the imputation of malice especially when that book is written by one who is so clearly capable of better things as for the critical question mr wilde is beating the air when he defends idealism and romantic art in literature in the words of mrs harris to mrs gamp who's de niggin of it heaven forbid that we should refuse to an author the supreme pleasure of realizing the non-existent or that we should judge the aesthetic from the purely ethical standpoint no our criticism starts from lower ground mr wilde says that his story is a moral tale because the wicked persons in it come to a bad end we will not be so rude as to quote a certain remark about morality which one mr charles surface made to mr joseph surface we simply say that every critic has the right to point out that a work of art or literature is dull and incompetent in its treatment as the picture of dorian gray is and that its dullness and incompetence are not redeemed because it constantly hints not obscurely at disgusting sins and abominable crimes as the picture of dorian gray does end of section four